in the Night was a beautiful film. Um, the It was like watching watercolors come to life. I thought that animation was really cool, especially the way that it transitioned its images. Um, I thought that that was really cool and it helped with it, the analogy of humans being akin with nature and everything flowing together. Um, so I thought the transitions were super cool and the editing was very well done. Um, and that along with the music tied everything together. It really felt like an art piece um, that I was taken along for the ride with. So this was a really beautiful film that, um, yeah, I thought equating nature and humanity in that way was I mean, some images were almost felt provocative, but it was very tasteful and and the animation was pretty, so I really enjoyed this one as well. Roses in the Night uh, is a um, not quite animated film. I guess it is animated, but it, it's not animation in the sense that um, Disney does animation. Uh, it, it is more artistic. It's really um, drawings uh, with with chalk and pencil and 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 a little bit of paint. <laughs> that doesn't sound uh, all that exciting, but but it is actually. This is a remarkable little film. Uh, it, now it's an allegorical film based on um, a medieval. Uh, manuscript of some sort dealing with uh, uh, how nature and man in nature, man and woman in nature um, resemble the creatures and the flora and the fauna and uh, I can't uh, go in and explain in words what the film is portraying gra graphically but I will say that there is not a single moment in this film where you think, all right, made the point, what's next? No, it keeps your attention. It's constantly moving, constantly changing perspective. Um, it, it, the themes are a bit mature, so it's not something you would necessarily show uh, to, uh, to 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 younger children, but uh, it, it is a remarkable piece of work. Uh, it is directed by Pentro Kunchev, with sound by Zoran Uzalak. Now, the names say, well, where where is the name from? Well, I looked it up. The um, the the studio, the New Boyang Studio is the largest studio in Eastern Europe. It's based in Sofia, Bulgaria. And uh, it's, it's a very sophisticated piece of, of graphic art animation and the filmmaker's uh, craft coupled to an, uh, a very interesting uh, soundtrack. And so, this is the kind of film that is going to be watched for many years to come. And uh, it stands alone in that you, you, you really couldn't see there being a sequel. But as a piece of art, uh, it, it has a place that we'll see again and again. And so uh, for Mr. Kunchev, um, this is a uh, has to be a personal uh, triumph. Uh, it has a tremendous European feel, yet at the same time, uh, it's not that kind of uh, EU gloss. It maintains a root in Eastern Europe, which uh, sometimes uh, Eastern Europe is one of the, the the harder places in the world to understand for for a variety of reasons. Anyway, I think this film uh, stands on its own without any political uh, uh, message. Uh, but one can't help but saying to yourself, "This is an authentic voice." 
I very much enjoyed my time watching Roses in the Night. Uh, the biggest highlight for me was the art itself. It was very surreal, but also very beautiful. Uh, watching the shapes morph and twist into either people or uh, animals or any mix of the two, a lot of fantastical fantasy creatures, um, it was all very mesmerizing to watch because uh, the transitions were so fluid. Um, it was a very beautiful piece and I definitely enjoyed myself. Roses in the Night was definitely interesting. Um, it had a really unique animation style. <clears throat> very reminiscent of like you know older animated films from like the 70s and stuff um that you would see from europe um and yeah it was visually very interesting a lot of interesting colors and you know matching action and matching figures and yeah roses in the night gorgeous animation style that felt right out of this dreamy erotic storybook and using animation did lend almost an innocence and a discovery to to all of the images. Um, like the first time someone experiences these sensual these sensual moments, and it really added uh, some romanticism to the deeply sensual film. The transitions felt very organic, and I was always surprised and delighted by their evolution. It really connected to this idea of the primality and breaking the boundaries between human and the natural world and uh, just having those, those stunning revelations in these transitions throughout. So really uh, an atmospheric piece and one that I will definitely be thinking of. Well, this is very interesting. Uh, first of all, I just, I love seeing animation like this, you know, seeing it independently produced by these, uh, by studios like this. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, no holds barred you know they're going to animate what they want <laughs> it's um you know it's interesting to see a you know a kind of an, an adult tale here i mean it's really it's uh it's kind of a fairy tale but um yeah it's it's very you know elemental depictions of um human sexuality you know we're seeing these nymph-like creatures transformed to different elements and you know yeah it's a lot to take in you know but it's it's obviously some sort of uh, um, creation myth or what have you that we're seeing here uh, reminds me of a uh, reminds me of a lot of you know Greek and Roman mythology, but um, the look was great. I love the kind of storybook look of it. the The character design um, is beautifully done. Um, I love the kind of yeah, just kind of the the rough hewn sketch look of it, and then also um, yeah, the creative transitions throughout. You know, were very very beautifully executed. And um, yeah, in no dialogue, just telling this, this crazy, fantastical story uh, with no dialogue, just imagery. And also the score was very effective and, and, and well, and well um, composed. So great job on this. I hope it is well for you and the team. All right, I just finished watching um, Roses in the Night, which I found to be a very beautiful piece and an incredibly well-constructed and meditative piece that um, is so in tune with nature that it feels uh, very spiritual. Um, and ethereal, and I, and I really enjoyed the um, sort of live storyboard um, animation aspect, which made it feel like a classic fable or like um, an ancient tale, while also feeling like a, a modern um, rendition of those ideas. There was sort of very um, ancient, like religious and like biblical um, ideas, especially in terms of nature, men and women, um, transformation, um, the blending between um, identities and um, entities of being in terms of animals and um, humans and how easily the narrative sh shifted from one elemental aspect to the next elemental aspect. There was a sort of a unity and sort of a big picture sort of cosmic um, tie into everything that was going on that felt very um, spiritual and um, wide-eyed and, and I really enjoyed. And I felt like the concept um, lent itself to a general audience to really um, interpret how they feel about it and um, to make their own connections with the very um, striking images that you end up seeing. So in the end, I really did enjoy it a lot. It was a, a great piece.